I just wanted you to see it in case you can't see it in the video. Um, you know, I mean, there's nothing really special about it. It's just your standard echoes that you know we made better because we had a green screen character and we faked it and made it look like it went farther. Uh, we added the motion to it. Okay, uh, let me see if there's other stuff I can talk about. Here was another thing. Um, this is just how it would look. Remember how before I had the grunge, the image map, just a still image, um, it's just sitting there. Now to make it look like the camera, you know, if this was a video, uh, make it look like the camera actually follows them up. What you'd want to do is take video with nobody in it of the scene that you have to pretend your character's in. You take video of that scene, and in the, pretty much the same motion, you're going to have your character jumping in. Uh, you have it, have the camera pan up, and pretend you're following a character where you want the person to be, and do the pan just like you would want, which is basically an upward. You know, for this one, I just did an upward pan, and uh, picture a ground level here that was here, and of course you're panning up, and the ceiling would be up here. So base in this way, it looks it'll look like the camera's actually panning up and following the character rather than you just have still image there. So see, I mean, you really fake it out and make it look like uh, you're seen. If you were in a building and and did the pan up, and you know you were pretending you were there, and then later come in, and once you have you all still like that, you can put you place you be, you know in the first steps that we did place you on the floor on your scene and then you skim through your video footage and then place you up on the ceiling area close to the ceiling because you're doing the jump where you want to be and this and this way when the whole video goes through it'll actually look like you just you know you're in there you can put you wherever you want because you're cut out you know you're a cut out character from a green screen so you can place you wherever the heck you want and uh, and fake it, make it look like you were really in there, and have you on the floor, and have you jump up towards the ceiling. Just pretty much like what they did in the scene. So you know that that looks, you know, it's just really, it just really fakes people out, you know, when they see that. You know, you, it's just hopefully this gives you the idea. I didn't have, of course, uh, actual footage of me panning uh, from a floor and <laughs> all that stuff, but you know, I just had a signal texture that I just keyframed that I keyframed over time to move up, you know, basically like right here. I just keyframed it like that. And then, you know, I pre-comped it of course and put it in the pre-comp of our Iron Man. This way it looks like it's you know, it's actually your the cam uh, there was a camera in there that just started here and then panned up and followed Iron Man up. So I mean it it really it's really some cool stuff that you can do. That had nothing to do with the aura trail, obviously, or the run trail. I was just uh, showing you that part because I thought, you know, in case you don't know things like that, that might actually help in the future when filming and all that and setting your green screen up. And all right, let me think of other stuff. All right, another thing I wanted to show you is, uh, you know, uh, about the outlines, how to make better displacement out of it. Here, of course. You know, this is added to adding the displacement out of it. Um, you know, you had the plain lines before, of course, you know, which looks okay and everything, but it, when you want to add the displacement to it to get it a better look, um, of course, it looks much better. But now you can see it's kind of bubbly looking, you know. It gives it a little bit of a bubbly look to it. I don't know if you can see it. And it kind of wiggles, of course. It's got a little wiggliness in it. Now, what I did was... Let me go back to it. What I like to do for my trails, rather than like leave it plain or use those presets and all that other junk, um, I like to add a CC. I mean, it does take a little bit longer to render, but what I like to do is let me go ahead and close this. Close this. I like to add a CC vector blur, blur before my echo. And what I want it to look like is pretty much this. Here's here's your outline. Okay, let me get just leave it like that, I guess. Uh, yeah, let me go ahead and throw a solid on there just so we can see. I guess we'll leave it. We'll try a white one. See how that looks. Just want you to be able to see this really good. Okay. 
Okay, white's not working very good for us. So we'll just have to leave it the color it is for now, I guess, because white's overdoing it. Um, all right. Anyways, just just look at it like this. You see how I have? Let me turn. That is what I'll do. I'll turn my vector blur. I'll go zoom in. Okay, you have your standard outline here. What I like to do is turn, make, set my vector blur to perpendicular, and just change the amount angle and set it to property to alpha. You want to change all these settings in here until you get something similar to this. You want like a line in the middle and then a ripply looking outline around it. Basically you're distorting the you're distorting the line. You don't want a solid square line like this. You want to kind of pull it up. I, right now my mount's set to 20 and it kind of like twists the blur around. It, does, it, it makes the blur kind of twisted in a way. You know, you're blurring it out plus twisting it, which leaves for a really nice looking effect on your uh, trails. It just makes it look more gaseous, you know. It gives it a gassier look, I guess, because it, 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 it like makes little bubbles all the way around your outline. So, you know, you just play with the settings basically until you get something that looks similar to what I got. Map softness, just turn it up. You know, you you just want to make sure you get that that gaseous look to it, you know, thin outline like that. And it it'll be a little bit fainter, so you gotta be careful. You don't want to make it too faint. That's what, you just wanna, you know, just get it to where you have that that blurriness on the outside. Plus the solid outline in the middle. And then, of course, after the echo, because then you'll add your echo to it. After the echo, you're going to want to, here, here's the CC vector blur off. Right? See how it's all solid and everything? Doesn't look very good. And we turn it back on. It just gives it, you know, a much better look. Especially when you go to, it works wonders on displacement. It just makes the displacement look gassy. That's what gives it the gaseous look. Uh, when I do that, I use CC vector blur before the echo, not after, because it messes the echo, or it, it'll do it to the whole trail. Now, you'll also want to turn, do a turbulent displace after the echo, because you're gonna, that'll like ripple the, uh, make the whole outline, the whole trail wiggly, and it'll wiggle all the edges around. So see, I added that, and it makes it wiggly. And I add it, all, all I do for that is just turn the amount up to 50 or so, you know, something, whatever you, whatever you need for your specific out, or trail. It will be a little slow, you know, but it is worth it because it does make a much better, uh, look to it to do all this stuff. Especially the CC vector. Anything you add before an echo makes, slows the computer down. So you have to watch that, but, you know, it is worth it. Just do some, like, test with like a really low number of echoes first and then uh, do higher echoes and then go back to it and uh, have you know render a full thing and basically just turn your size down mine's set for four you know I like to play with anything below f like five for size when it comes to the wiggling you don't want too much wiggliness you just want just enough just to wiggle the uh, outline so you don't want to go crazy like that um, I'll just set it to 4 again. And what you want to do for your evolution is you need to animate this over time. You don't, If you don't want to deal with the expressions like I did in one of my tutorials, the loop out continue one, basically just come to keyframe 0. I'll just do it right here. Come to keyframe 0. Let me turn this off. Right? And make sure this is set to 0 and all, it's all 0. You're at keyframe 0 on the outlined one. Just click the stopwatch, then go all the way to the end of your timeline. And what you need to do is, for every every 60 frames, you want to rev this one thing one time. So you just use your math on it. Uh, say this is 300 frames, right? You got 300 frames, so you need this to revolve every 60 keyframes.